That's enough. On your feet. Where are you taking us? If this is about that weapon your friend was talking about, we don't have it and we don't know shit about it. Silence! Move! No. No, 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 I'm not going in there. I won't. Anyone want to join her? As I thought. Through the doors. Now! The captain is expecting you. Forward. Carefully. These cultists have the crash on high alert. You must have questions. You must have questions. Githyanki aren't fond of the cultists. Could be a good thing. Within the artifact, a feeling stirs. Uncertainty. Your curiosity is getting... Deskva! Where did you... Journey's over, Istik. It'll be swift. I must speak with your Gustiel. Our Queen's protocol demands it. Report to the infirmary. Gustil Stornagos will see to you. What's up for discussion? Leave me alone. The watch must remain undisturbed. I see they're letting even Istic mercenaries in these days. Ugh, blood, rust, scar. Is there no odious substance not smeared on this delivery? I'd heard this plane was disgusting, but I didn't think it would be like this. Chick. Most metals here fold like Istics, much like Istics themselves. But if you're so keen to extol their virtues, you can pay accordingly. What if they don't find the weapon? Do we even know it? An istic? But... But you can't be here! I can't be seen with you! That's your cry! Quani Rel, the Inquisition have more to worry about than who you talk to in the corridors. Our Queen's eyes and ears. They're her will incarnate. And right now, they're here. See? I told you. Nothing to worry about. She's in her quarters. Through those doors. This imposing portrait depicts a powerful Githyanki warrior, undeniably regal in her mien. Blacketh herself. She is both the sun that blinds us and the void that contains us. Praise be. In the corner of the painting is a small symbol you can't quite place. You recall stories of a prince riding a comet just like this one. 
With sudden clarity, you realize it's the symbol of Orpheus, a forgotten hero from the tales of your youth. The sign of Orpheus? <sighs> Blasphemy! Would I could quarter the Vandal myself! This Githyanki looks different from the others you've seen here. The way her stark white skin stretches over her sharp features gives her a distinctly otherworldly aspect. You take a moment to fully appreciate your masterpiece. She certainly looks a little less regal now. A wretched display. I thought you better than such juvenile antics. What is this? Spark! I need to get rid of it before the Inquisitor sees. No, no, no. Oh, the Inquisitor will have our necks for this! Let's see what this does. I've not met Istik before. Do you all look like that? Not now, Kachucky! We're busy! <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Don't waste a step. A parasite. Take it. It might be useful. Vertical incision from pineal eye to end of notochord. Intestinal coloration consistent with samples 231 to 259. Do you have a question? Or are you just going to stand there gawking? I am a child of Gith, not discarded rat flesh. Am I not due your respect? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Let the istic with you speak. And I will decide what respect you're owed. Nothing your kind is capable of understanding. The better question is, what brings an istic to my infirmary? You must be desperate to seek my aid. Tell me, how long have you been infected? Fascinating. So you're conscious of your infection, but showing no signs of cerebral impairment. Either your tadpole is special, or you are. We must find out which. Go to the Saithisk. I will ensure you are cured. Your gratitude is unnecessary. The procedure brings its own rewards. Even Githyanki rarely experiences Aethys. You are very lucky, Istik. The device is strange, made of taut flesh and pockmarked metal. It waits for something. The Zathisk. Vlacket's purity distilled. My duty. My right. The device is part organic, part synthetic. But you can't tell how it was made, or how it works. Stand aside! My 
My time has come. I will not. I gave you my might. You will respect my charge. You walk the line between confident and arrogant. A beguiling turn of events. Go on, into the Saithisk. I will follow. The device is strange, made of taut flesh and pockmarked metal. It waits for something. You feel your parasite stir. Do not fear. My experience in operating this machine is unparalleled. There is nothing on any plane stronger than a Zathis for curing unwanted afflictions. Your body grows cold, its warmth sapped by the cold metal seat. The machine awakens. You must focus on the parasite at all times. The Zathisk will do the rest. Layers of magic weave themselves tightly around your head. The tadpole squirms and contracts. It's trying to hide. You realize the device is hunting your parasite, but it's doing so blindly. Without direction, your faculties could be permanently damaged. Your skull groans and bends under the pressure. Then, agony. Through waves of torment, you search for the parasite's lurking presence. The device searches too. You sense its hunger, its craving. It wants the tadpole, but maybe something more. That's it. Ignore the pain. Think of the tadpole. Think of it purged. This torment. You, you must persist. You must be cleansed. The parasite burrows deeper, sinking its teeth into your brain's exposed tissue. It sucks greedily. You feel yourself ebbing away, while the parasite only grows stronger. It's evolving. never fails. The device yearns for the creature, for every part of you tainted by its presence. You will be consumed. The tadpole quivers. A different magic is building within it. This one is ancient. Rotten. No. No more. Finally, the device makes contact. You feel your spirit unraveling, drawn from you in sinewy threads. Your body is a leaden husk, abandoned as you drift along the threads into the darkness. Death awaits. The room swims back into focus. Your mind is intact, yet unfamiliar. Inside it, the tadpole lives on, and you feel different. No! No! The Zaydisk! What have you done? My life's work! 
Gone. And yet you live. And so does your parasite. Her voice cuts with a fanatical edge, an obsession bordering on mania. If there's a chance the parasite lives, she wants it. Really? Then all this destruction was a symptom of its power? <laughs> Incredible. I am disappointed that we could not extract it alive. It would have been an exceptional specimen. In any case, your problem is resolved. Leave me. I must salvage what I can. No! I followed the protocol! I must be cleansed! Skvar! The Sathisk! It might have killed you! I felt your torment. Someone must have tampered with it. An aberrance I can't begin to comprehend. There must be a Sharlak in this crash. A traitor. The sort that is hunted, slaughtered, and erased from our histories. Few would dare dishonor their queen. Fewer still would be so brazen. Now hurry. We must go to the Chirai and inform him of the Zathisk's tampering. Is Stick are permitted to view the birthing pools now? These are strange times. Step carefully while here. Our hatchery is protected by lethal safeguards. I do not wish to pick your remains from them. Amusing. You may speak to the Vash if you wish, but stay away from the egg. There will be no second warning. You can tell Kithrak Therazin that my position has not changed. The egg requires more time. Furthermore... Oh. I was not expecting an istic. What brings you to my hatchery? Someone with orders from our commander to destroy this egg. Almost all of the eggs in his clutch have hatched. We await only one more. Which is... taking its time. Failure at the first hurdle of existence. Most caretakers would crush it and be done. Most caretakers would not give the child its fair chance. But I shall. There could be greatness in that shell. You note that the hope in his voice is tinged with weariness. It's the voice of a man who's fought the inevitable for a long time. Not all that arrive late are weak. I created this entire hatchery, despite being the last of my clutch to hatch. They almost drowned me in the hatching pool, if it wasn't for the Vash of my clutch. This one deserves the same chance. You! What do you know about Gith Yankee child rearing? Still, Captain's due for an inspection any day now. And if she sees it here. Tell me, what will you do with it if I entrust it to you? That's what I feared. Still. 
I'm sure its nature will pervade, even if raised among lesser species. I can no longer ignore that Kithrak Thurizen's patience has its limits. Very well. Here. Take these. They will aid your approach to the egg. No time to rest. Wish I had a bag of holding. Large green egg with an uneven shell. You can see a vague outline of something within it. The egg is warm to the touch, the rough shell like slate beneath your fingers. Whatever is within is stirring ever so slightly. Hatched Githyanki egg should be the burden of a Vaj, not a warrior, whether ascended or otherwise. And yet, I'm drawn to the warmth of it. A child of Gith and a servant of Vlakith grows within. Keep it close. Perhaps in our care, it might yet hatch. And don't you dare pass it to that lunatic woman prowling the mountain pass. You've caught the egg, haven't you? Be on your way, then. Before I change my mind. Here goes nothing. Keep hesitating. My instructions were clear. Because... Because they don't make sense. Killing each other like this. It's stupid. Or for you... Silence! It seems your child is prattling, is attracting an audience. You fight again. This time, daggers only. And to the death, as instructed. Who wants to challenge this sniveling Istar? I've been practicing every night, Savage. Let me have a go. I... I refuse. There has to be a better way. You dropped your guard on your weak side and were completely open to an offhand counter. Move him out of the way. We've wasted enough time already. Did you enjoy our little demonstration? A mere taste of the power Vlakith commands. I have no interests in whatever delusional beliefs the boy harbored. The illithids infecting this region are not to be reasoned with. They are to be exterminated. If the boy was too stupid to realize this, his death is a mercy for the warriors next to him. To the Inquisitor at the crash. The Sathisk's failure must be reported. Kalir's clutch held three dozen eggs, more or less. Though I've learned of crashes that harbored a hundred. 
humanoid. How I despise the term. Githyanki are quite superior to humans. Our biology slates state that Githyanki came to lay eggs after we escaped a lithid enslavement and took to the astral plane. It's an asexual process. A favorable change by any estimation. Hideous to imagine a life where I couldn't partake in the pleasures of sex without the looming threat of bearing children. Shukiani. Githyanki chosen by Vlakith herself to bear young. The queen assigns when and where they must lay, and how many eggs they must bear. The Shukiani pass their eggs in the material plane. In the astral, time barely passes. It is a meticulous process, carefully timed so that the eggs hatch at once. Go on then. My own Savage would never have threatened a youngling. A waste of time and energy. The pupils themselves culled the weak from their ranks. I myself felled four of my own classmates once Kalir had a hundred times circled to Rill. Of course. My people have no use for cowards. Every trainee that I slayed was either too weak to withstand the lessons, or was cocky enough to pick a fight they could never win. They underestimated me. So they paid the price. The Githyanki are only as powerful as their weakest warrior. Jaquith de Venzir, the termination of the frail, strengthens us. Did you see that? The look on Varl's face when the blade went in. My technique let me down. Thank Vlakith, the Savage is here to correct me. Gate have six major arteries. No! Wait, seven! Stop distracting me! I have to learn this or the Savash will get angry. Again. Did you see that? What a wimp! I'm way braver than Val. You must have questions. The disc appears in your mind's eye. Lazelle sees it too and considers the vision. Tiersu markings. Ancient. I recognize them, but I can't make sense. No. Wait. The texts are enciphered, but there's a common speech translation beneath, carved in a different hand. It's a story about... about Orpheus. Your head buzzes in concert with Lazelle's, but it hardly matters. Even without the connection, you'd recognize her discomfort. A traitor. A dead one. This text is heresy. I can hardly bear to read it, let alone speak it. Very well. I will read it to you. The Prince of the Comet, Part 2. The Prince of the Comet, Orpheus himself, led his honor guard into battle. Their red dragons bellowed with righteous anger, and the heavens erupted. The glorious prince cried to all who could hear him, Praise be to my mother Gith, the queen of the one sky, sacrificed to the hells by the renegade Vlakith. 
But the true heir, the prince of the comet, could not overcome Vlakith's knights and their ill-gotten worms. Mighty Voss, Gestil Kithrak, lit the astral sky aflame. When the ash had cleared, beloved Orpheus was gone. True heir, glorious prince, chuck. There's no greater crime than to exalt the pretender called Orpheus. Disregard this, this drivel. Gith declared that Vlakith should be queen. Orpheus would have ceded control to the Geich. She did nothing of the sort. Thank your good fortunes, I'm a tolerant woman. Or I'd have sliced off a few toes for suggesting it. <laughs> 